This video was made in collaboration with the Avatar Wiki. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. Water Tribe Fashion The citizens of the Northern and Southern Water Tribe wear blues, purples, and whites as their general palette, representing the nation's cultural heritage and the practice of waterbending. The attire in both polar tribes usually incorporates furs and thick material. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over water tribe fashion. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Outerwear, fur coats. When out in the cold, people of the water tribes wear heavy hooded coats lined and trimmed with soft fur to keep the wearer warm. The exteriors often bear designs resembling waves or other imagery that link the garments to waterbending and the general culture of the water tribes. These coats can be found in an array of styles. Although not universal, women's coats are usually shown with a fur or leather belt-like wrap tied just below the chest, while men's coats typically have no tie at the waist and display string-like fur hangings suspended from the collar. In general, men's coats also tend to be shorter than those worn by women. Coats worn by young children sometimes follow these aesthetics, but at other times consist of simple draped coverings that change little between the sexes. By Avatar Korra's lifetime, coats in the Southern Water Tribe had become more elaborate and diverse. While retaining the general aesthetic distinguishing men and women's styles, the coats consisted of multiple interconnected components. Outerwear, gloves. Multiple styles of gloves can be found among the Water Tribes. The style worn by Katara, for example, has the index finger and thumb separate from the rest of the mitten. Another design is the classic five-fingered glove, such as those worn by Princess Yue. Men in the Water Tribes usually wear a three-hole mitten, keeping their index and middle fingers separate from the ring and pinky fingers, and the thumb by itself. Light Clothing This type of clothing is worn beneath the fur coats, the latter of which are often not used when traveling to warmer regions. Women typically wear long, kimono-like tunics that extend to the knees or ankles, often with split sides for leg movement. Men's tunics are similarly fashioned, but boxier and less form-fitting. They are also shorter, usually extending only to the waist or at most to the knees. These tunics can consist of multiple layers, and depending on the season and location in which they are worn, may be long-sleeved, short-sleeved, or have no sleeves at all. Fur-trimmed leggings or breeches, which can be close-fitting or baggy in style, are worn by both men and women. Lighter clothing also comes in various styles. Princess Yue's lighter clothing is shown as a light purple dress covered by a kimono-like tunic in a darker shade of purple. Her attire also had no split sides, like those of Katara's and Sokka's. The tunic was lined with white trim, displaying the Water Tribe emblem in the lower corner. The purple coloring seems to be something of a trend in the Northern Tribe, and at least more so than in the South, as Melina and Malik were also seen wearing it during their time in the South Pole, though in a slightly lighter shade. Katara's and Yue's dresses also somewhat resemble Vietnamese Ao Dai, a long split tunic dress worn over trousers. The lighter clothing worn by Avatar Korra, while unmistakably water tribe in style, is noticeably more masculine in its design. Her tunics are often sleeveless and much shorter than those normally worn by women, and she typically eschews longer dresses and most ornaments, except during formal occasions. Undergarments, Sarashi. These strips of cloth are wrapped around the women's hips and chest and worn as undergarments or even as a swimsuit. Men can specially wrap a sarashi as a loincloth worn in a similar fashion to briefs or boxers. The sarashi can also be used to wrap injuries and can be wrapped around one's arms or legs to prevent sprains. Hair, hair loopies. Hair loopies are a traditional hairstyle worn by the women of the polar water tribes. Two locks of hair on either side of the head are fastened with clips onto the back of the head, hanging down more loosely than the rest of the hair. In the Southern Water Tribe, these loopies are usually plain. However, in the Northern Water Tribe, they are often braided into elaborate designs. Hair, Warrior's Wolf Tail. A warrior's wolf tail is a hairstyle used by male Water Tribe warriors. This style requires younger warriors, like Sokka, to shave the sides of their head, only growing the top. The hair is pulled back and tied in a short queue resembling a wolf's tail. As the warrior gets older, the sides of his hair grow and remain uncut. The hair grows out with age, eventually reaching a length to the warrior's mid-back. Sokka and the rest of the Southern Water Tribe warriors sported this style during the invasion of the Fire Nation. Hair, 
Head Pieces Princess Yue was one of the few members of the Water Tribe known to wear hair ornaments. She wore blue bands decorated with lighter blue medallions bearing the Water Tribe insignia, and they were used to hold up, tie, and decorate her hair. Other members of the Water Tribes generally wear a variety of hair ties, hats, and beads rather than full-on ornaments. Katara and other female tribe members, for example, use ties to hold their hairstyles in place and beads to decorate them. Tarlock wore his hair in three narrow cues decorated with small blue beads, and Avatar Korra wore a small cup-like cap during formal occasions. Customs, Cosmetics Water tribe warriors wear face paint during battles, allowing other warriors in the tribe to distinguish their own members as well as serve as a type of camouflage in the ice-filled tundra of the poles. In the Northern Water Tribe, women also employ cosmetics. Princess Yue, for example, wore makeup of various pink and peach shades on a regular basis, and Eska wore subtle touches of purple eyeshadow when attending the Glacier Spirits Festival with her family. Customs, Necklaces In the Water Tribes, it is traditional for a man to give a special necklace to the woman whom he wishes to marry. This betrothal necklace, often crafted by the prospective groom himself, typically takes the form of a blue medallion on a choker, though there is no one standard design. The necklace signifies the engagement of the couple and indicates to other men that the woman is spoken for. Other Water Tribe necklaces serve purely aesthetic purposes, such as the chokers worn by Sokka and many other male tribesmen, often made of white material. Foggy Swamp Tribe The members of the Foggy Swamp Tribe utilize natural materials from the swamp to craft their clothing and accessories, including leaves, tree bark, and possibly animal skins. These are fashioned into a variety of simple garments, including skirts, loincloths, hats made from single large leaves, and shirts. Due to the use of these natural elements, the people of the Foggy Swamp Tribe sport various greens and browns, rather than the blues and whites of their polar cousins. It should be noted, though, that the water in the swamp is green due to the abundance of plant life, so the Foggy Swamp Tribe follows the consistent model for clothing of wearing the color of their element. Men of the Foggy Swamp Tribe often wear their hair in long braided queues somewhat similar to the men of the upper ring of Ba Sing Se. The tribe also utilizes wood to create necklaces and a crude form of body armor, the latter of which was worn during the attempted invasion of the Fire Nation on the Day of Black Sun. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.